Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Um, Lindy's asked me to do a short video on gouache, using gouache um, for painting. Um, so let's have a go. Let's start with having a look at what gouache is. Um, usually comes in these little tubes, although you can get it in little pans like watercolour sets. Um, it's basically like an opaque watercolour. So whereas watercolour dries translucent, so you can layer it up in these kind of veils, it's very watery. Um, gouache dries really opaque and flat and very matte. So it tends to be a preferred medium by um, designers, um, illustrators, um, and you might know it um, from some of those beautiful Persian miniature paintings that you can see in the V&A or the British Museum or the British Library, um, where you know you have lots of areas of flat, very rich pattern. Um, yeah, I recommend looking at those. Okay, so you get it in these tubes. I've got just a small set at home of six primary colours, and that will do just fine. Um, Sometimes having a limited set, a limited palette can be quite helpful in terms of mixing some interesting colours, not being overloaded with too much choice. Um, in terms of brushes, again, because it's quite a similar medium to watercolour, um, any brushes, sort of regular paint brushes that you use for watercolour will do just fine. So something like a sable or, or a synthetic sable, basically you want something soft, I think, because when it dries, gouache has quite a soft sort of velvety texture and a surface to it. Um, and so if your brush is nice and soft, I kind of think stroking it on quite gently doesn't disrupt that beautiful surface and it works, works much more nicely. That's a personal preference, but do try and see what you prefer. Um, different brushes. I, I kind of like these flat sort of square brushes. With these, you get quite a nice, um, a nice sharp edged line. We'll just do a little, a bit thinner. So just have a play around with some different brushes or what you have to hand and see what kind of marks you can make. But these, these flat brushes tend to be quite good because you can get a nice broad crisp edged mark and then if you use it on its side you know a nice quite a thin contrasting line. Um, similarly I like these sort of quite regular round edge brush and again depending on how you use them you can get a really good range of marks so if you use it gently at the tip get a nice fine line or again if you use more pressure get quite a nice broad line and these brushes can be good for sort of filling in areas of colour um, gouache can be used thick or thin, it's quite a flexible medium um, and you can use it wet in wet or you can paint over it when it's dry and it has really good coverage. Again, because the surface is quite fragile, you do need to work quite carefully um, if you don't want to disrupt the surface. Um, but again, have a go, have a go and it's all trial and error and learning from joyful mistakes. Um, paper that you might need, depends what you've got around the house. Um, I prefer working on a mid-tone or a coloured paper for gouache, just because I think the colours really start singing on a kind of mid-tone, um, whereas watercolour works beautifully on a white ground. Yeah, this is my preference for gouache. Um, 
you might have a pad around the house a bit like some pastel paper um, which has a range of different colours which can be quite nice to work with um, if not then you can do what I'm doing I'm just working today on the back of a manila folder which is like you know an old school sort of grey bluey um, colour or this kind of brown manila envelope colour or if you've got an old notebook then the hardboard on the back of the notebook um, works really well. So what should we do with our gouache today? So I thought we'd have a go at making a kind of sampler sheet um, just as a way of experimenting with it and um, seeing how the colours work together. Um, so I've just found some things from the kitchen. So I've got a tomato that I've cut open, um, a lemon and a few flowers that I picked from my walk yesterday. Um, and yeah, let's just have a go and see, have a go at drawing just different bits and pieces. I'm not thinking about making um, finished paintings of the whole objects. I'm literally just going to pick up um, different bits and pieces and see which bits interest me, see if I can pick out some pattern that I might just want to make a little study of. Um, and then I might use some of those little bits to repeat them and make a kind of sampler page of different patterns on my paper. Okay. Okay, welcome back. Um, so I've had a go at very quickly, um, just literally drawing, painting what I see, having a play with what the colours are doing and what the shapes are doing. Um, and so I've got a little selection down here. Um, I thought it would be good to show you as well um, that sometimes if you don't like what you've done, so for instance, this bit here, is not looking how I wanted it to. Uh, it's looking a bit hammy and I don't like these lines. So with the gouache medium you can actually, once it's dry, you can either paint over the top of that and it will work quite nicely to obliterate the bits that you don't like. Or another way to do it is to wet your brush and because it's a water-based medium, you can reactivate the paint and it will lift off if you very gently use your brush to lift it off. And then you can just use a little bit of tissue to dab it up. Um, I think the less you rework stuff, the better with gouache because it can tend to get a little bit um, hammy and churned up if you start overloading the paper. Um, so now I'm going to keep having a play and I'm just going to pick out a couple of bits that I'm fairly happy with and see if I can repeat them on my page to generate some kind of pattern. So I'll see you in a bit. Hello again. So I worked pretty quickly there, um, just doing rather than thinking and just instinctively um, just following 
little bits and pieces of um, what I wanted to repeat. And you can see that over time you could build up a really nice page, like a sampler sheet of different patterns, which then you could go on and pick out different bits and repeat them again. So just generate um, ideas really and have a play uh, with the medium. Um, something that it made me think of again to tell you is that, you know, you can cover up quite nicely different areas. Um, sometimes with some of the colours, it does show through, so you get quite a nice um, shift of tone as you layer up, say, a yellow over the red. And with this sheet, that made me think that I could use a bit of what happened very accidentally and make a new bit of pattern here. So there's so much potential um, in just this very quick exercise. So I hope you have some fun with it and enjoy gouache. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.